This is Zola, a fearless warrior. His fame and prowess in battle are known far and wide across the lands. Zola is also known for his wisdom and fairness. This brave warrior turned 80 years old today. For his 80th birthday, he decides to get married and he is heading to the neighboring village to fetch his mate. A few minutes later, he sees a beautiful woman there standing. Her grace and beauty unmatched. She is adorned in traditional attire, colorful and rich in heritage, her hair styled intricately, reflecting the traditions of her people. She is from a tribe unknown to Zola. The warrior is immediately struck by her presence. Their eyes meet, and in that moment, something profound stirs within them. The warrior, usually so resolute and unyielding, finds himself captivated by her charm and grace. You must be the legendary warrior named Zola. I always dreamed of having a husband just like you. Yes, indeed, I am Zola. You are such a beauty. Today is my birthday and I am in search of a bride. Would you like to be my wife? I would gladly accept your proposition in one condition. Go ahead, I am listening. You will never ask me my name nor my origin. A nameless wife. Well, okay then, I accept. Can I at least call you Nara? Nara is a pretty name and I like it. It is a done deal. Let's go to my village and celebrate our union at once before I wake up and find out that our meeting was just a dream. The day of celebration has dawned. The air is perfumed with the scents of frangipani and hibiscus, mingling with the smoky aroma of cooking African dishes. Drums echoed in the distance, their rhythm a pulsating heartbeat that enlivened the community. Villagers, dressed in a kaleidoscope of colors, gathered in jubilation. Children, their laughter like music, played among the baobab trees, their feet stirring the red dust of the earth. Elders, whose faces were etched with the wisdom of time, watched on with eyes gleaming with pride and joy. Nara, I hope you are enjoying our wedding celebration. I am so happy to call you my wife. And you my husband. Yes, I love the beautiful colors showcased by your people. Your food is delicious as well. Zola's wife is so pretty. Where in the world did he find a woman like that? I do not know my friend. From her looks it is safe to say that she comes from a faraway land. Zola's wife reminds me of one of the tales that my grandmother used to tell me and my siblings. It was about the a beautiful African princess named Bebeta. Her whole family was killed when the villagers united to overthrow her father the king. Bebeta was able to escape her fate. She then swore to take revenge for her family. She made a pact with the devil so that every 200 years she would rise from her grave and destroy the descendants of the villagers who doomed her kinship. Yes, I have heard of this tale. Everyone is having fun. This is a very big wedding. Grandma, you are not ready yet. I am almost done, darling. A little bit of patience, please. I only made you wait for 120 minutes so far. Grandma, did you say only? What? You forgot the days when your late mother used to wake up at 6 a.m. to figure out what she wanted to put on for seven hours, and she only had two outfits to choose from. Okay, okay. Take your time, Grandma. I'll wait till sundown. All right, young lady. I am all done. How do I look? You look younger than me, Grandma. How does that sound? Good! I thought so too. Now let us join the crowd, my child. Tamba, look over there. Do you see that girl in a white armor? Yes, that's Binta. Her late mother was born and raised here. That is her grandmother next to her. A funny old lady. She looks tough with that armor on. Let me go and talk to her real quick. Salam ladies. My name is Titan Kelly. 
You there, I like the colors on your hair. Grandma, let's keep walking. I know he is not your type, but I find him very handsome. Binta, it's time for you to get married, don't you think? Grandma, please. So how did it go? Was she friendly or not? Well, she ignored me. I should have let you introduce us. It would have been more appropriate, I think. Oh well, at least you tried. She is a warrior and she probably loves her sword more than men. Tamba, that's not funny. I wasn't trying to be. Hi Seko. Good to see you. What brings you to my mom's village? Salam Binta. I have come to warn the inhabitants of this village of an imminent danger. A village nearby was burned to the ground last night. There wasn't a single survivor. It looked like the work of a powerful witch or wizard, so be on the lookout. Oh my goodness! What a dreadful news! This is unprecedented! My whole life I never heard anything like this! Who is that guy she is talking to over there? I have no clue who that is. Judging from the armor he is wearing he must be from Binta's father's village. This is a terrible news. I have friends and family members who lived in that village. You are now telling me that you didn't find any survivors. Tomorrow me and my fighters will head there to conduct our own investigation. Well noted Chief Zola. I will now take my leave. Did you take a good look at Zola's wife? Not really. Why? I don't know how to explain it but I have this strange feeling about her. Just keep an eye on her while you are here. Are you going back to our village? Not yet. I am going back to the burned down village to continue the investigation. Just be very careful Seko. There are powerful wizards and witches out there. Salam. Welcome to our village. I am Titan Kelly. And you who are you? Seko, I have to stay next to my grandma. See you next time. You tried to get Binta's attention. Sorry it did not work. I don't want to be rude but I have to get going. Your second attempt was unsuccessful I see. Maybe next time you should act like a clown perhaps that will make her laugh a little bit. Tamba. If you have nothing nice to say don't say nothing. Alright, sorry my friend. Binta and that warrior went to speak with Chief Zola. I wonder what they were talking about. I have no idea. I am sure we will find out after Zola's honeymoon. The wedding celebration, a vibrant festival of love and community, had come to a tranquil end. Fatigued from the day's joyous exertions, the villagers had retreated into the welcoming arms of slumber. The village square, which had been a whirlwind of music, dance, and laughter, now lay silent, save for the soft rustling of leaves and the gentle night breeze. Leftover decorations fluttered slightly, adding a subtle, rhythmic movement to the otherwise still scene. Too bad. Another foolish leader is about to bring doom and gloom upon him and his people. The first sin committed by the leader from the other village angered the dragon and set it free and it burned everything down to the ground. I can't imagine what the dragon is going to do this time. Eat them alive! That's what he is going to do this time. That is going to be gruesome. My Egyptian princess, are we going to wait here and watch? What do you think? We didn't come all the way here for nothing. Mother wants me to report to her once our mission is done, therefore every piece of information that we gather will matter. Mola, just be quiet and watch over me like a good bodyguard. Look, Mola! Up there! Here comes the dragon! Magnificent! This is my second time seeing this adorable and huge beast and it feels like the first time! Oh my! A massive dragon, with scales as black as obsidian, burst through the clouds. 
Its wings spanned wider than the village itself, casting a shadow over the entire community. Chief Zola stepped forward, his eyes filled with determination. He held a long spear passed down through generations, the symbol of his leadership. The villagers rallied behind him, grabbing their weapon, bows, spears, and machetes. Their faces etched with determination and fearlessness. The dragon, its fiery eyes fixed upon the village, let out a deafening roar that shook the very ground. It spewed torrents of searing flames, incinerating huts and sending plumes of smoke into the sky. The thatched roofs of the village crackled and burned, sending billowing smoke into the air. Chaos reigned as villagers fled in terror, but Zola and his fighters stood firm. With courage born of desperation, the villagers launched their attack. Arrows whistled through the air, and spears were thrown with remarkable precision. The dragon, though fearsome and powerful, could not escape the onslaught. Its scales, as hard as steel, were pierced, and its roars filled with agony. Zola, leading the charge, reached the dragon's side. With a mighty leap, he clung to its scaly back, his spear poised for a deadly strike. The dragon twisted and turned, trying to dislodge its attacker, but Zola's grip was unbreakable. He plunged the spear deep into the dragon's heart, eliciting an earth-shaking bellow of agony. The villagers continued to fight relentlessly, driving the dragon to the ground, where it thrashed in its death throes. As the dragon lay wounded and defeated, Zola raised his spear high, signaling the villagers to gather around. They formed a circle around the fallen beast, and together, they struck the final blow, ending the dragon's reign of terror. What? They killed the dragon! Princess Asenath, we should leave this place at once before they notice us. Not until we get back the Ring of Dragons from Heba. Did you forget that the ring is in her possession, or what? With all due respect, how good is that ring if the dragon it summons is dead? Didn't you hear me? I said the ring of dragons. This ring can summon another dragon. All my mother has to do is find another virgin slave girl, that's all you big head. Who goes there? Show yourself now before I throw my spear at you. Oh. Heba. It is you. Yes, it's me, Princess Aseneth. My mission here is done. I want to return home to my parents. Good thing for you that you didn't die in the flames like the other girl. We had a hard time retrieving her corpse under those rubbles. We had to get the Ring of the Dragon so we could pass it on to you. That man touched you and the dragon came so you are no longer a virgin. You are now useless to me. Just give me the ring. I will give you the ring back only if you promise to take me with you so I can be home with my parents and don't worry I will keep my mouth shut. No one in Egypt will know about the dragon ring nor everything that has happened here. Look who is talking back to me now. Look, either I order Mola to bring me your finger with the dragon's ring on it or you can hand it to me nice and easy and you let me decide of your fate. The choice is yours, Heba. Do not give her the ring. So you are here to test the power of these dragons from what I have just heard. You want to evaluate the amount of damage a dragon can do when it attacks a territory. You should be ashamed of yourself. How can you use our villages for your testing ground? And what kind of black magic are you using to bring out these dragons? Who are you? Anyway, it does not matter who you are. I am the princess of Egypt, a girl like you is beneath me. Heba throw me the ring quick. That warrior female next to you won't let you hand it to me. Zola. Here they are. The spirits are telling me that your wife and the two foreigners over there are responsible for the attack on our village. They are the ones who raised the dragon from the abyss. The spirits also told me that a demonic ring is in the possession of your wife and that we must not let the two foreigners get a hold of it. Nara, I trusted you and now people have died because of you. Is this what you wanted all along? 
Zola, I am truly appalled by what has happened to the village. That girl over there and her mother are the masterminds behind all of this madness. This girl is a princess of Egypt and I am only her slave. They made me wear this ring of dragons then ordered me to lure you into bed with me. When a virgin woman put on this ring she becomes the wife of the dragons. The moment you touched me you angered the dragons and one of them emerged from the abyss and attacked the village. I obeyed them just for the safety of my parents. I can care less what happens to me as long as my parents are safe and sound. Enough talking Heba. Give me the ring now. If I return to my homeland without it, I promise you that your parents will suffer the consequences of your actions. Sola we should apprehend these two before they get away. No. We will let them go. The pharaoh of Egypt is a very cruel man, if anything happens to his daughter he will annihilate our entire village. It is better to let them go. You two over there. Get out of our territory at once. And you are not taking the ring of dragons with you? That will serve you as a punishment. I am a princess, watch your tone old man. I take orders from no one, especially not from a low life like you. Keep talking to me like that and I will kill you and your bodyguard right here right now. Well, I am not leaving without the dragon ring. Dump me in a river, hang me on a tree or whatever but I am not leaving without the ring. Besides, if my father the pharaoh finds out that you hurt me, he will come and destroy your village with everyone in it. Suddenly, a faint rustling echoed through the trees. Then, with a thunderous rush of wind, a huge mythic eagle unfurled above the Egyptian princess. Before she could react, the colossal creature swooped down with a breathtaking swoosh of air, its talons outstretched. In an instant, a senath was seized in the grip of the giant eagle, her body lifted effortlessly from the forest floor, then both the animal and the young girl vanished in the skies in a matter of seconds. A gigantic eagle just whisked the princess away. That is crazy. Can any of you tell me where this animal took the princess? Zola, that was the eagle from the mountain of the doomed ones. This eagle belongs to Akemi. Few months ago, you killed her only son in a duel. Akemi vows revenge for death of her son, and she is going to use this girl as a bargaining chip. We are in serious trouble. 